Hi there, and welcome to this latest podcast from Adept English. If you've listened to the Adept English podcast for a while, you'll know that from time to time, one of the subjects I cover is that of EVs or electric vehicles. Do I own one of these cars? No or not yet. Do you own one of these cars? For me, so far, it's too expensive. And there are still all kinds of practical problems. I'm sure you've looked at it too. I'll also be talking about Tesla in this episode and some of the Chinese car manufacturers who may be challenging Tesla. So today, the latest in the EV market. I'm not an expert, but I like to read the latest news. And this is a very current and relevant subject for you to practice your English on. I do enjoy making subjects easier to understand in English for English language learners. You'll get some great vocabulary today and you'll get to practice numbers and statistics as well as hopefully learning about the electric vehicle market. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So why do I not yet own an electric car? Well, the same reasons as for many other people, I suspect. I don't want to be responsible for children in Nigeria working in lithium mines or children in the Democratic Republic of Congo working in cobalt mines, both of which are currently necessary to make the batteries in electric vehicles. This is already the case for many of the devices we use. Smartphones and laptops use batteries with lithium and cobalt in them. But this is only going to get worse if current EV technology is adopted worldwide. Strangely, none of that features in the marketing associated with electric vehicles. On the practical side, I'm not yet convinced that an electric vehicle will be able to do my longer journeys. I don't want to have to book into a hotel overnight because I need to charge my car on the way to my sister's house up north. That would be crazy. The verb to charge, C-H-A-R-G-E, means to fill the battery with electricity. And that's another of the problems. There are still not enough charge points in the UK. That's the place where you charge up your electric vehicle. And I'm sure that's the case in many countries of the world too. There just aren't enough of them. I also don't want the damage caused to the environment from the fact that I would have to change an EV every five to seven years. That's a huge amount of metal and plastic and a huge battery being discarded. Which brings me round again to cost. My current car is 10 years old. My trusty Fiat is still going strong and I've no plans to change it. I paid for it outright when I bought it in 2017. So this car is real value for money. Of course, in the future, when EVs become more viable, more economic, and more truly friendly to the environment and don't require children to go down mines, I'd love to own an electric vehicle. And I do see it as a way forward. So Tesla were the premium brand, the front runner in the EV market. But as you've probably heard, Tesla sales have fallen. Much of this is due to the unpopularity of the Trump presidency. If not in the US, then certainly around the world, Elon Musk, Tesla's president and owner, is seen as clearly a great businessman, entrepreneur and inventor. But in terms of his politics, people are not so keen. Elon Musk is a divisive figure. Divisive means he divides opinion. But currently, his unpopularity is being reflected in the sales of Tesla cars. So how bad is it for Tesla? Well, there's an article I read in the magazine Rest of the World. The link is in the transcript if you want to read it. And there are some bad statistics in there. Tesla was world leader in the electric vehicle market, but recently the company's sales across the US, China and Europe have fallen dramatically. And the stock price 
the price of the shares, has fallen 50% since December 2024. And it seems there's more sensitivity in some countries than others. In Germany, where Elon Musk supported the right-wing populist party, Tesla sales fell by 76% in February 2025. In China, Tesla sales have fallen by 49%. But in the US, following Elon Musk's association with Donald Trump, the company saw only a 6% decline. More widely across Europe, sales in the Netherlands were down 24%, in Sweden 42%, 48% in Norway and Denmark, 45% in France, 55% in Italy, 10% in Spain and 53% in Portugal. And this was before the Trump tariffs were announced. That's T-A-R-I-F-F, the extra charges in other words. So there's been quite some damage and reputation clearly matters. Lots of people are feeling it's not cool to buy a Tesla car at the moment. Meanwhile, Tesla has been trying to increase its market in other countries, places like India, South Africa and Saudi Arabia. But this may not solve Tesla's problem as people often prefer companies that are native to their country. That's native, N-A-T-I-V-E, meaning from that country. Where are Tesla cars produced? Well, there is a huge factory in Fremont, California and in Austin, Texas. But Tesla cars are also produced in factories in Berlin and Shanghai. So we will have to wait and see what possible effect any global trade war is likely to have on Tesla. Having factories in China and Europe may prove to be good moves. So if Tesla cars are too expensive for most people, what types of EV are available around the world? Well, apparently Tata Motors, partner to the company Tata Steel that used to operate in the UK, Tata Motors have more than 60% of the Indian electric car market. Its cars are popular and they have nice low prices. But Chinese car companies are tough competitors also for Tesla. Chinese car manufacturing companies BYD and MG Motor are also in the top five EVs sold in India. Many of them are sold as taxis or ride hail vehicles as they're known. And the problem for Tesla is not just that Chinese-made electric vehicles are much cheaper. They're also more technologically advanced. Their technology is further forward. For example, Chinese manufacturer BYD, their latest electric vehicle, can charge almost as quickly as the time taken to fill a car with petrol. That's one of the big problems solved then. And while BYD lead the way, there are quite a lot of Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers. Many of these names I haven't heard of before. Ion, Zika, Geely, Jack, Sherry, Jayco, Leap Motor, Skywell, Smart and Xiaopung. Quite a lot of names I've not heard before, but names we may get to know very well in the future. MG started off as a British brand in the 1920s, but it's been owned by a Chinese company since 2007. And one of the cars in their MG4 range can do up to 435 miles on a single charge. That's fantastic. That would be another of the concerns with EVs addressed. Solved. So it's getting closer to being viable for ordinary people. As well as the environmental concerns, one thing that hasn't been addressed yet is price. I had a look online at the 10 best Chinese EVs for 2025. This list was published online by the Electric Car Scheme. Again, the link is in the transcript. A quick search of this page revealed those top 10 Chinese EVs ranged in price between £27,000 and £55,000. I don't know about you, but for me, that is way beyond the price I can afford to pay for a car. Definitely out of my price bracket. My trusty Fiat bought in 2017, I think I paid about 
five to six thousand pounds for it and it's still going strong. That's about the amount I have to spend on a car. And I'm sure for many people, it's less than that. In the UK, historically, cars have been really quite cheap if you buy them second hand. And petrol cars last a long time. We've yet to see an EV that has a long life. My daughter's car, for example, is exactly the same age as my son. It was registered on his actual birthday. That car is nearly 17 years old and still going. My sister in France has more than one car, but one of them is a 25-year-old Berlingo. I've mentioned it before. It's not pretty, but it's still going. I realise I'm sounding like an ad for Citroen, but it's true. My daughter's car is also a Citroen. These cars have what we call staying power. They keep going. And that's not yet the case for electric vehicles. There was good news in October 2024, however, for the UK. If Chinese vehicles are going to lead the way, there was a decision by the UK government not to put tariffs on Chinese vehicles. It's not the same in the EU countries, though. There, tariffs on Chinese vehicles are going to rise from 10% up to 45% in the next five years. Of course, they want to protect their own car manufacturers. The BBC article in which I read about these tariffs said, There have been concerns that such a move could raise electric vehicle prices for buyers. Duh. Well, yes. Surely if we want to hit our net zero targets for CO2, something's got to change. The EU may want to protect its own car manufacturers, but if people can't afford to buy them, it's not going to work well. Interesting times in the electric vehicle market then. But generally speaking, electric vehicles move closer to becoming something that the average person might be able to buy. And just as well as we have targets in many countries. In the UK, 2035. My goodness, we'd better get a move on. It's only 10 years away now. Thank goodness for Chinese technology, I say. Maybe they will make it possible. Let us know what you think. You may have a completely different opinion to mine. We'd love to hear from you. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye.